So the reason a country would issue a digital currency is because it's a competitiveness issue. When you actually ask a central banker, why are you interested in this? You know, the answer comes back competitiveness because mm. central bankers know what a lot of us don't know, which is that their product is a, is a product. Mm. The dollar is a product. The pound's a product. And if there is something out there that is faster, more efficient, provides better data. More stable, theoretically, because of the public blockchain. Sure. even More trust, like, even. More trust, lower no, infrastructure costs. No transaction yeah. cost. If that's true, huh. then they have a problem on their hands. They have a point. Who has a problem? A uh, central bank, from a competitive standpoint. The one who doesn't deploy it. Correct. Got it. So this would become an arms race where if some company, I'll just pick uh, Ireland, decides to do this or something, a country picks to do this, they would, people routing money in the world would say, you know what? We can see every single transaction on the ledger in Ireland. We know that there's not a money laundering or as much money laundering issues, as much uh, counterfeiting. Like, we don't know how many counterfeit $100 bills there are out there, but there's a lot, from my understanding. Well, if you can move, you know, $100 million in Irish money, you know, for $2, and you can do it in 20 minutes, you'll settle in Irish dollars instead of pounds. Wow. And so the other reason that it's really interesting is it speeds up the velocity of money, which is really important to central bankers. My background's in economics, and so why this is, stuff why is, is like catnip monetary to me. velocity? I've heard this term many times, but describe Mon- what monetary velocity is and why it's important. Because in one way, monetary velocity having a transaction fee associated with it means there's revenue being generated by the moving of money. But if you're advocating it, for it's almost like oil no in the engine of yeah. the economy. Okay, explain. right. It's like oil in the engine of the economy, and so the faster money is moving around, the more it's being utilized. The more capital is being utilized, the more economic growth you're going to see. Hmm. So the Bank of England's done some really interesting studies on this, where you know if they they uh, estimate that if they moved 30 percent of their transaction volume in the UK to a digital currency, they would see three or four points in economic growth. Doesn't hmm. sound like a lot. But well, three or four number, points yeah. in economic growth is enough to eliminate unemployment in the UK. And, well, that might be a whole year's growth in a, in a, in a country. No, uh, that's eight years' growth in the UK. In the UK, yeah. yeah. But um, in the United States, where we grow 2% a year, a year and a half, um, one point and a half oh, or something. We've we been haven't growing. hit 2% actualized in a while. Yeah. So it would be two years of growth or three years of growth. Three or four at the current yeah. rate, yeah. Which is pretty significant. I mean, we'll get a politician with a four-year term uh, <laughs> a nice bump. For and sure. I mean, that's for 30% of the volume moving to a digital currency, not 100%, right? Hmm. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, this offshoot that's occurred, Ethereum. We all know about Bitcoin, but for people in the audience who have a light understanding of Ethereum versus Bitcoin, explain the difference and why Ethereum now is, has it caught up to Bitcoin in terms of market cap or it's getting close? No, it's it's quite a ways back. Quite a ways moment. back. On yeah, it got it got cap, close oh, for a few days. Volume. Got close Tra- for a few days, and then Bitcoin went back yeah. up, or Ether, Ethereum went down. Ether went down a little, and Bitcoin went up a lot. Yeah. Uh, but transaction volume is that what is growing steadily on Ethereum? So Ethereum is getting to the point now where it's actually I read being that it used. caught up in something, but no. I thought maybe it was transaction volume it caught up in then. But the market caps are significantly different. Yeah, they're significantly different. How, what percentage of bitcoins are lost and gone forever? Five to ten percent. Really, that seems low to me. Yeah. What? How many? What percentage of bitcoins does Satoshi own? The the person or, or the person or persons who created it. How much do they have in their wallets? What percentage of the Bitcoin? I think it's know? like a billion dollars worth or something like that. So there's a billion dollars in whoever created this sitting there. Yep. And it not one has ever been sold. Correct. So either it's lost, or that person is playing an incredibly long game. Or. Or Let's have a new theory, or if you he, if the person has an economist or had a solid basis in economics, they know that any good monetary system needs a monetary base, huh. basically a base that's never moving, and they mm. mine that to create the base. And what's interesting is they very publicly mined it. You can very trivially find all the addresses, huh. but then there's other miners, very early early miners, like first twelve miners of Bitcoin, where the funds are very hard to trace. Huh. And so if I was doing it. I would have done the monetary base, but then I would have mined a side stash of Bitcoin Ah. that is harder to trace, and I would have sold out of that side stash. Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to tell you about the awesome Squarespace. I use Squarespace all the time. I think I've created a half dozen websites this year alone, Launch Angel Summit, 
founder.university, angel.university, uh, every one of our websites we put onto Squarespace here at launch and we love it. It costs us 10, 20 bucks a month to have an amazing, gorgeous website and they will even give you a free domain name if you start up for a year. So start your free trial today. No credit card is required. You get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. And if you decide to sign up for Squarespace after the trial, use the promo code TWIST and you will get 10% off your first purchase. You will have a professionally designed website. You can pick from all these amazing, beautiful templates and it works everywhere on mobile, on your desktop, on a wide monitor, on a small monitor, on an iPad, on an iPhone, Android. It doesn't matter what you're using. It will look beautiful. State-of-the-art tech, secure and stable. It can withstand massive amounts of traffic when you go vile, vi when you go viral, and it's trusted by millions, including some of the most respected brands in the world. I am a huge fan of Squarespace. Thank you to Squarespace, and make sure you use that promo code TWIST. So we do it with our in-house creative and our content staff, not by hiring expensive developers. Thanks to my friends at Squarespace. Okay. Okay.